your eyes are not deceiving you. It is not Creative Monday. It is a Sunday afternoon, and I hope all is well, and I hope everyone had a wonderful a weekend. It's Football Sunday. Both the New York Jets and the New York Giants played, and guess what? Second week in a row, they have lost. <laughs> That's New York for you. I am here on a, on a Sunday night because... I will not be able to come to you on our usual Creative Monday. And I didn't want you to miss out on this week's topic. So, remember, if this is your first time joining Conversations with JR, Conversations with JR is dedicated to talking about the issues that impact our relationships and our daily life. Now, remember last week, Monday, on my Facebook Live that I talk to you about relationships and I ask you the question, I ask my viewers the question, how have your relationship, your marriage, your partnership, your entanglement, how has that changed since the first time that we have been ordered to be sheltered in place, then we got into the summertime and it looks like we're going back to being uh, sheltered in place again. But this week, I am not going to talk about relationships. I am directing this conversation directly to you. This is all about focusing on you and self-reflection. Have you given any thought to how you have changed or need to be or need to make changes since this pandemic rolled into town? Now, honestly, you cannot tell me that you are the same person that you were starting in March up until now when we were ordered to shelter into place and so many changes have been made. Well, while we were enclosed in our homes, uh, people had to handle a lot of things and they had to keep a balance between mental health, emotional health, and finances. And now that we have had time to enjoy the summer and fall and winter is approaching and it's upon us, have you taken the time to think about your life and the adjustments that you might have to make? Because guess what? There is no going back to normal. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but there is no going back to normal. The first thing is we need to learn to move forward and a brace change. Have you ever given thought to how you're going to move forward and how you're going to embrace change? It's been my experience that many people do not like to take this downtime in order to do self-reflection because there are areas in their life that they know that they have put on hold, areas in their life that they know that they have avoided and they just don't want um, to confront them. And it makes them uncomfortable to sit and to think about themselves. Instead, they prefer to avoid and to put off things that really need to be addressed. It takes a real brave and honest person to sit down and face themselves, to confess their weaknesses, their faults, their struggles, and also to look at their disappointments and to admit that they have gotten to a point in their life that they are disappointed. You know, look at yourself in the mirror. Yes, stand in front of the mirror and look at yourself in the mirror. Now, can you look at that person in the mirror and honestly talk back to that person because it is you and say that before this pandemic rolled into town, that you were 100% satisfied, happy, fulfilled in your life and that there's nothing to be changed? Or were there moments doing us being sheltered into place? that you thought about your life and you thought about, maybe it's time to reevaluate my life. Maybe it is time to make 
changes. This is very personal because I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you making changes within your life. I am not talking about your career and the family and the church and all the other things that we busy ourselves with to avoid working on self, to avoid that self-reflection, that deep discovery that we need to reevaluate who we are, what are we doing in our entire life. You know, I understand that some people say, well, I don't have time for this, but I understand that people are still continue to struggle with finances and unemployment and, and, and uh, uh, homeschooling and working from home and people are getting evicted and people are just simply concerned about their life and concerned about their future. And I've been having conversations with uh, family members and friends and, and, and um, people from church and co-workers and just having conversations with people in general. And what I hear people say is this. This is what they have to say. This crisis has caused them to come face to face with areas of their lives that they either avoid improving or that they have some regrets and that they hope that it's not too late and that they have time to make changes. Now, here are some of the people upon my investigation, and I want you to think about you as I'm reading these off. Some people, here are some things that people say that they regret not taking vacations and enjoying life more, having more relaxed and downtime. And some people said that they should have watched their spending and save money more, that they did frivolous spending and that they should save their money more. Some people regret not completing their education or not starting their education and going after that goal and or making an effort to work on their relationships more or complete unfinished projects. Most people said that they understood that there were a lot of pain from unbroken promises from broken promises and and things that they should have done but the biggest regret that i repeatedly hear people say to me is this this crisis has has called their attention to the things in life that are truly important think about that this crisis of course people a lot of people who are paying attention stood still to realize what's really important. Remember, we were stripped bare and we had to learn how to get along with the essentials that we have. But remember, I am directing this conversation directly to you about self-reflection, where you are right now in your life. You know, this nation has been through a great test. I don't have to tell you that. A great test this year concerning the coronavirus, concerning racial tensions, concerning this election year that is coming up. It seem, and it seems to some people that nothing is going to get better. Be, be, and therefore, it is easy for some people to really, really give up, to throw in a towel and wait for things to get better. Wait for someone else to make things better for you. But I am challenging you, this is Conversations with JR, and I am challenging you to take matters in your own hand and take some time, quiet time. It's not gonna happen overnight and over a week and over a month to do some deep reflections. Thank you, Michael George, I bless you for tuning in tonight. Love your Bible study. It is going to take some time for you to take some deep, deep reflection of your life. My example of being sheltered in place, just to, just to show you where I'm going with this. I have taken advantage of this downtime. I know this downtime was too much for some people because they want you to sitting still, being still, being home, and being confronted with the things that they need to take care of. I've taken advantage of this downtime and I started reading more. I have gotten back to reading more and it is a pleasure. You know what I've discovered during this downtime? I discovered that I like this slower pace of life. I like it. Some people don't. I like this short place of life. So I've decided to make a choice. I'm not going back to the grind. 
I am not going back to draining myself, stuffing my, my calendar full of appointments until I can't breathe. I decided that I want a more focused life. I want a life that is more meaningful and that is on purpose. I want to work on goals that are more meaningful and that are, that that is filled with purpose. And so um I took in this time to I enjoy blogging, drag the pen, WordPress, that's my blog. I enjoy blogging. I enjoy writing books. My third book is coming out in December. And that's what shelter, being sheltered in place have done for me. It gave me the time to slow down and really focus on the things that really matter to me the most. Instead of running out and grinding and acting like a robot and punching in and punching out and working overtime and dragging ourselves and draining ourselves and, and, and neglecting our family and ne neglecting ourselves and neglecting our health and our mental health and our emotional health and our relationships. I have decided that I prefer uh, to have time to blog and write more books. I want more time to produce more YouTube videos. You know, I have a YouTube channel, Conversations with JR. I want more time to do more Facebook Lives on my Creative Monday. I want more time to push my brand, Conversations with JR. I'm working on a script right now. I'm going to do a documentary. I am going to do a documentary next year, summer. And the biggest change that I've decided that I am going to make, that I started reflecting during this pandemic and I took advantage of this time. And I didn't waste this time. I didn't waste this time. I am going to transition from one profession to the next. And I have been doing the workshops, doing the research, and doing everything that I need to do to transition from one profession to the next profession. I had a lot of time to do a lot of self-reflection, and it was good. And one of the things that, another thing that I've learned about myself, I don't spend enough time with family. I don't. And I could, and I don't. So today, that's why I'm coming to you on a Sunday. Today, after church service, I went to my sister's house. I had dinner with the family. We sat back and relaxed in, 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 in the living room. We kicked off our shoes. We watched the, 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 the football and we had fun. And I know that that's what I need to do uh, for myself. I can tell you that I look myself in the mirror and no, I was not 100% satisfied with all the areas of my life. So this is what the shelter in place has done for me. Again, asking you to take some time, take a moment, you have the time. Slow down and breathe. Don't be afraid to go in a room and sit without a radio on and without TV on and without looking at your phone and do some journaling, do some reading books. Before I leave, I would like to leave you with something. Like I told you, I was reading and I read this book, Chicken Soup uh, uh, for the Recovering Soul. I've been reading a lot of books. This is a great book. Great book, and I'm going to read some more of this series. But I just want to read to you uh, one of the writers in this book, Tian Dayton. It's a PhD. And, and, and what she wrote in this book about having time to sit down and reflect and what it will do for you, for your mind, your soul, your body. You know, you have to pay attention to your mental health. It is very important for men and women to sit down and pay attention to your mental health, your emotional health, your spiritual health. Balance is the key. Awareness is the key. I just want you to read what this person has said. Just, just, just bear with me. This is what I have learned. This is, this is from... Chicken soup from the soul. Wake up. This is what I've learned. This is what this writer says. I believe in love. I believe that life wants to work out if we let it. I believe that there are no dead spots in the universe. And that if we whisper into it at any place, anywhere, our prayers will be carried straight to God's ears. I believe that God is in charge and that if we hold that 
forth and release it every time it occurs to us. Good will follow us. Now, this is this person sitting down doing deep reflection. I believe that I am growing and evolving. And so is this universe. That I am a part of something special. Something called life. I believe that life is a gift and that it is my responsibility to work it till it works. I believe that if we put each good into the world, the world will eventually put it right back into us. If we are patient and know how to wait for and watch for the good. I believe that the secrets of life are sewn into the linings of the universe for us to tease out one at a time. I believe that a good attitude is worth more than money. A good heart is worth more than a high birth and that a good character is the foundation upon which at least generations can build on. I believe that appreciation always is how to deepen our experience of beauty that is always everywhere around us. This beauty is everywhere around us. I believe in children, that they are God's way of giving us a second chance at living. I believe that a good marriage is not only about finding the right person, but also about being the right person that broken hearts can mend and broken lives can find meaning and purpose again. I believe in love and its power to heal and restore and reveal our next lesson. That for everyone we take towards God, every step that we take towards God, God takes four towards us. I believe that promises really do come true. That if we work our program with sincerity and open hearts and do our best to align our will with God's, that Life will work out and we will find inner peace. That's what I found during this pandemic. Lastly, I believe that trials of my life were how I get here and just for today. So the trials of my life is what led me to get to where I am today. And just for today, I do not regret the past, nor wish to close the door on it. Just for today, I am grateful for all of it, all of the past, all of the experience, all of the negative, all of the trauma. I believe that God has been guiding my steps in each and every way even when I didn't know that for sure, I believe. Chicken soup for the recovering of souls. I believe. And what I believe, conversations with JR, what I believe is that if we sit down and start having conversations with yourself, deep reflection, deep thinking, journaling, Take some time from the chaos and the busyness of this world. Stay focused on what is really important now. W-I-N. Pay attention. The world is changing. We need to learn how to make adjustments. The world is changing. Reflection. Don't be afraid to face yourself. Don't be afraid to confess to yourself that you are not happy where you are with who you are and what you are doing. There's room for change. There's room for progress. There is room to make things better. But the only person who can do that is you. I hear people always say, I'm doing this for family. I'm doing this for my wife. I'm doing this for my church. I'm doing this. Do what you need to do right now for you, to strengthen you, to heal yourself. 
to be your authentic true self. Take off the mask and stop faking it until you make it. That's gone. That's gone. So I thank you for joining me on this Sunday night. As I was saying, I cannot be with you on Creative Monday. Remember what I always say, start the week off with positivity, with high energy, make plans, make goals, schedule your days, make every day count, make every day count. Don't regret that you have to get up and go to work. There are people out there who do not have jobs. Don't regret where you live, embrace everything in life. But right now, Focus on how you're going to embrace and love yourself and enjoy the downtime that you have. And don't waste it sitting around watching TV and stuffing your face full of unhealthy things. People say we only live once. No, we live life every day that we are blessed to breathe. You live life every day. You only die once. Let's live our best life. This is Conversations with JR. I am your host, JR Floyd, and you can meet Conversation on JR on all social media platforms. Don't forget to share and like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Conversations with JR. Remember, sharing is caring, knowledge is power. Let's get the word out there. And remember, sit down today and have some good conversations with yourself. I thank you for joining me.